Welcome to the Bile Balance HealthCast, episode number 413, Obesity in America and Obesity in Europe. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. This summer, we've been traveling around the Mediterranean in Spain and in Italy and in Sicily and Northern Africa, and we have been doing some research about how people eat, what they eat, how they exercise, uh, why there seems to be so much, so much less obesity among the natives around the Mediterranean than there is in America. What we find on our travels is that Americans and North Central Europeans tend to be more obese. And we wondered desperately, why is that so? And so we've talked to the natives and said, well, what do you do that's different? How is it different? And the, they don't use the phrase, but they're talking about the Medi what we know is the Mediterranean, Mediterranean diet. diet. Yeah. So, so, so tell them. We, most of our patients are told to eat a Mediterranean diet. And until you come here, you don't realize what that means. And what that means is fresh, fresh, fresh food every day, no, no preservatives. Uh, always eating vegetables and fruit, and the breads that they eat are, are, they eat some bread, but they eat more vegetables, fruit, fish, and meat, lamb, that kind of, that kind of meat. And they, that type of diet, it is what you eat, not just how much you eat, And, but and how what it's you prepared, eat. the fact that it's prepared fresh. You, they have major supermarket chains like uh, Carrefour and Auchan that are like Walmart. And you can go in and buy all the prepared foods there that you can get in America. But most Europeans, most of the time, don't do that. They go to local markets in their neighborhoods. Uh, we went to a huge open-air market in Rome where there were, seemed like miles of booths of fresh fruit, fresh fish, fresh vegetables. And, and the, the Romans were walking around ar arguing with the seller about how fresh is this and where did it come from and wanting to they feel the lots texture. of mushrooms. Yes. And in Marrakesh, there were 20 different kinds of nuts, nuts I've never heard of, that are protein. I mean, they're excellent protein. And they, and they had put them, them in food. And they, they put them in their breads and they put them in the foods. They put them with fish. Mm -hmm. they, salads have, have nuts in them. So they're getting protein from that. That is one of the examples of why we walk around and the only obese people we see here are Americans and Northern Europeans, German, French, English. 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 We read an article this week as we were preparing this uh, conversation that one in four uh, Britons are considered to be obese now. 25% of the population. That's getting to be very close to America. So that has to do with what they eat as well. They eat more like what we eat in America than they than the Mediterranean folks do. And so, the exercise that they do, right. most of the Europeans that we've talked to and that we've seen, in, especially in the smaller villages and towns, walk everywhere. They, and if you've tried to drive in New York, you've tried to drive in Rome, it's almost impossible. And so a lot of people in Rome, they have mass transit uh, and they walk. They walk miles and miles and miles. And we've walked miles and miles. We have. And we haven't gained weight and we've eaten <laughs> Lots of wonderful food on the Mediterranean diet. On the Mediterranean diet. Yeah. So we have been very. Oh, oh my gosh! We have. We'll be showing you if you're watching uh, YouTube. We'll, we have examples here of the beautiful eggs they have and the beautiful fresh fruit. And these are all from breakfast. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of thing that you see from uh, a breakfast for, of course, for uh, travelers, which is a much bigger breakfast than they would eat themselves. So when we were talking to uh, our guides and other people that live here, they were saying, well, you know, we wake up and have granita. And I'm like, I don't what's, know what granita, granita is. Yeah. And granita and coffee. Mm -hmm. And granita is a sugary, and they don't always use, they don't use white sugar. And it's a sugary fruit uh, slush that gives frozen. them energy, yes. frozen ener energy, and it, it cools them down. And that's what they have for breakfast which is an unusual thing. And then they have protein at about mm, 10 or 10 11. 11. Yeah, they have and some cheese and some meat or some cheese and some nuts and some fruit. 
and then around three in the afternoon they have lunch well one to three their children come home everybody meets for lunch it's like dividing your day into two and so if you have a job that you can go home with go go home from the family eats their largest meal at lunch and they have proteins cheeses uh, meats, uh, ham, especially there's a lot of ham, mm-hmm. but it's very lean ham, and uh, that, but also all fresh. They also have a garden, so yeah. they they usually eat what they grow if they live outside the city. Well, they have small neighborhood markets that have these fresh mm-hmm. fruits uh, and vegetables, and then dinner time is usually around eight or nine o'clock at night and they do not eat in front of the television set they eat around the table as a family and they talk about their day and they talk loudly (laughs) loudly (laughs) with their hands and just like my you know what I'm used to (laughs) so so that causes us to make comparisons about what we experienced here this summer and what we experienced in America typically and typically in America we buy a lot of prepackaged because we're busy and because it's convenient and because we're marketed to think this way we buy prepared foods that have been prepared in advance for us so that it's very easy and quick pop it in a microwave pop it in an oven and, and it's hot and then you eat it but it'll live on a shelf they talk about shelf life it'll live on the shelf for three or four years because they have so many preservatives in it so mm-hmm. much salt in it so much sugar in it those things are all killing us and we need to move to the outside parameters of the grocery store when you go shopping for groceries <laughs> in a big grocery store shop around the outside walls that's where the fresh ingredients are that's where mm-hmm. the vegetables are that's where the fresh fruits are uh the, get foods. the meats and if you stay out of the inner aisles you can stay away from many of the prepared packaged canned for survival kinds of foods that so many of us eat all the time Europeans also don't snack during the day. They're they're not walking around eating candy and potato chips. Or all day no long. no big gulps, hardly any sodas <laughs> exactly. anywhere. Yes. That it's always juice or water or sparkling water or mineral water, but uh, but it is not soda. Yes. Sodas could be wine, could, it be, could beer. be it could be wine. Yeah. And they do they do drink some wine. We haven't seen anyone drunk. And, and so continuing the, the comparison, you need to uh, watch your volume, do portion control. Americans eat too large a portion, partly because for 50 years, the American culture focused on raising our children to be members of the Clean Your Plate Club. <laughs> so if it's on your plate, mom worked don't to cook it, it, you got to eat it, don't waste it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to not teach our children that, and we need to reteach ourselves so that we don't eat the same volume. If you don't prepare the volume, you don't eat it. That helps. Uh, and there are a lot of little tricks for controlling your consumption that dietitians know, that doctors know that they can work with you on to like to serve from the stove on a smaller plate. Get a smaller plate. Don't use the, one of the things we've noticed in Europe is they're not using 12 and 14 inch plates to serve our meals. Mm-hmm. We're getting eight, and eight ten inch six plates. and eight. Yeah. And, and so there are tricks that you can use to eat less and we should follow those. We should not eat in front of the television. We should not eat with a book in our hands. We should eat looking at and talking with those with whom Unless we are Unless it's eating. our book. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. But, but basically, we have told our patients this uh, for years, mm-hmm. that this is the way you should eat. But it's very hard to follow in the U.S. Mm-hmm. It's just we don't have our own gardens, and we don't have corner markets. Pe- we saw people coming home from work stopping buying their zucchini and buying all and of buying their fresh just enough foods. to fix and eat one of the things we've noticed in europe is that the refrigerators are, are a third to half the size <laughs> of the american refrigerators so they can't stock up uh three weeks worth of stuff in the refrigerator that they can just grab and eat they so don't they have canned. to cook fresh they i didn't yeah. i haven't seen anything that has been canned out of a can. or yeah. sell anything with cans they use jars which is much safer they reuse jars recycle so so they put everything that they're going if they have a garden and they're making tomatoes tomato something to preserve it and it's not fresh then they put it into a jar and and can it that way but not in a can so in summary if you're if you're in america and you're concerned about these issues the more you can eat fresh the more you can eat smaller amounts the more you walk and exercise turn off the television don't eat the refined sugars and the processed foods if you can avoid it and eat less beef uh, because even when you're eating beef you're absorbing the processed sugars from the corn syrup that's in the feed that goes to the cattle yeah you're also absorbing all of the toxins that are in the fat we all store our toxins in the fat we've talked about this before so the toxins are also stored in the fat in the beef 
So there is much to learn by way of comparison that could be helpful to those of us in America that can incorporate what we've learned in our daily life. Rex and lost five pounds on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've that's, been walking you know, and, five to ten miles. And a my day. clothes are looser, so yeah. so we've been eating a lot, but yeah. we've been walking a lot. Yes. And so this has been like a cleanse. Come to Europe, it's like a cleanse. <laughs> as, as long as you don't eat American, you're fine. Yes. So well, as, we, as, as always, thank you for listening and, and tune in next week for another episode about obesity in America and non-obesity in Europe when we talk about the more factors about food production and maintenance. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.